Thank you, Carl. Great to see you. People did ask me after a few years with Gartner, how did you conceive, what is the possible, what, how? And I thought about it for a while. I said, you know what, it's exactly the same energy, just a different direction. I used to, in the spring, a long time ago, in May of the year, I walked into a classroom for the 13th year in a row and I talked to a group of terrified sophomores about the Battle of Thermopylae and the Roman Republic and everything. And I talked for 10 minutes at a time and they had no idea what I was saying. By September of that year, I was sitting on the inquiry desk at a telecom market research firm and every time the phone rang, I jumped. I picked it up, I listened to a fellow on the other side talk about what he wanted to know about the telecom market, acronyms and everything. 10 minutes later, I had no idea what he was talking about. So it's just, you know, the, the shotgun was facing in the other direction, that's all. And the learning curve has been so steep ever since then. I wish I could tell you it's planed off, but it's been exactly the same, almost enough to make me cynical. It just never seemed to catch up to the challenge of learning about this market. And I think that's true in this case as well, that telecom providers have also been facing historic challenges in the transformation effort as I said, the challenges, as Carl pointed out, serious, implacable, and yes, a lot of this you've been familiar with, the commoditization of, of legacy services, the fact that comp the competitors are uh, asymmetrical. They don't have to care about wh where you get your money from. They're after a whole different game and destroying value for you in the, in the meantime. These things are all true, but the thing I would like to add and emphasize is that this bucket of challenges facing communications providers today is not static. It's not a pool that you can decide whether or not to jump into. It's a wave and it's coming for you. And in the face of that kind of challenge, you have got to make a choice. Carl talks about the retail provider. We at Gartner speak of the diversified strategy. Communications providers on the whole have been pursuing the diversified strategy, which is the equivalent of taking up arms against the sea of troubles and pushing against that tide to remain relevant in the end user experience of consumers and enterprise users. There is also the smart utility strategy, which you could pursue. There's nothing wrong with that. It is viable, and you're going to hear examples later today from both sides, as Carl said. That's fine. But without any action, you will find yourself into, into a utility role that you did not pick. And at that point, you will no longer be smart. You will still be a utility but you won't be smart. And that's what they all want to avoid. Now, whichever choice you make, these are the keys. We at Gartner believe these are the keys that will spark your success. Synergy, because the service portfolio is not a question of just cannibalizing and getting rid of legacy revenues. It's a finding a way to fuse the old with the new in a value proposition that a lot of your competitors can't touch because they're really after just point solutions, many of them. So thinking about that challenge and where you are with that. Also, partnership. Because frankly, you don't have time and you don't have the money to buy your way out of this. There is, first of all, no way out horizontally just becoming a bigger telecom provider. That is not going to solve these challenges at all. It might even exacerbate them. But you need to find agile partners as you try to become more agile to be ready to pivot, it's blockchain today, it's the eSIM tomorrow, it's 5G in two or three or four, five years, but it's the edge right now. These are all challenges you have to figure out how to answer by positioning yourself in an ecosystem. Even if you are attempting a diversified future, you've gotta have partners that can help you get that solution all the way to market and master it together in a way that thrills the customer. And finally, the impact on your organization, which is largely just recognizing that these first two things are going to happen. If you pursue synergy, if you master partnership, it's going to affect every employee in your organization, including you, who you report to, how often you meet, what metrics you have now, all new. They've all got to change. This is the area where, frankly, we've always seen the least well. It's not transparent. And I rather imagine there will be many different answers attempted and uh, succeeded at over the next few years. But it's got to be tried. You can't sit still. And while you're doing this, 
while you're pursuing this transformation with ambitions of growth and success, bear in mind that everybody else is thinking about doing that too. You know, the telecom business used to be a kind of closed up nut that nobody really ever bothered to crack open. But now, because of this uh, transformation challenge, we have sort of opened up the telecom market and looking at it from on the bottom, the network operations mastery. In the middle, you could talk about support functions, the operational support and business support. And at the top of this chart, uh, the service provision zone, you operate in all three of those areas. And there are a galaxy of other players in this market who, for the most part, are targeting only one or maybe two of those areas. Down at the network operations side, we have tower uh, companies who are, for the big providers in the world, a no-brainer. They take on the passive elements of the network. They operate them efficiently. Their growth is great. Their margins are great. And the telcos get to save on operational expenses in the passive network elements. Like I said, no-brainer. But three years from now, I don't think there's going to be any 3G and 4G towers left to source out. Are these guys going to get the 5G network? Are they going to get the small cells, the femtocells, the microcells, the picocells? Are they going to go into data center? They're still going to want to grow. They've got stock just like you do. And they've got to make those people happy. Right now, a complementary influence on the market. Over at the other side, much more competitive, I'm sure many of you have state-owned broadband networks in your, in your markets that are directly taking away network operations functions in some of the, you know, the most dense and wealthy parts of your territory. Private networks, I could say a bit more about those perhaps in the breakout session. We also have your traditional peers who, like you, are trying to do all things to all people. And then in the middle, we have a group of providers that I struggle to name, I have to tell you. I used to call them backbone MVNEs, which is just hopelessly poetic. But now I say international enablers. However, I have to qualify right away. It's not just at the international level. But there are players who sit in the core, and they assemble a value proposition which helps you and your company, but they also supply your competitors. They also approach some of the large enterprises in your territory. And so they're a little bit cooperative, a little bit competitive. At the, nat at the international level, this is Bix, Cineverse. Maybe you could look at Sigfox and the IoT that way. But there are backbone middle mile providers all across America that do exactly the same function within a smaller network footprint. And then I think most of you are quite well familiar with service provision attackers, MVNOs and OTTs, who while you are pursuing a difficult long-term transformation effort are already invading the house and trying to take away some of the market, especially in the consumer sector. They're coming in now, they're only picking one part of the market, and they're either charging ridiculously low prices or they're coming in for free. Damn them. But you've got to have an answer. Where are you going to be in this chart in two or three years? They all expect to grow. What kind of relationships are you going to adopt with such partners in the future? And where did the leading CSPs in the world come out? We've been following a group of the 31 of the largest CSPs in the world for several years now, trying to track how their effort at achieving adjacent market revenues is going. In 2017, based on our analysis, they, they achieved a little over one-fifth of their total operating revenues in adjacent market sectors. This is a good group of, of CSPs. It includes all the top 20. It's fixed only and mobile only providers. It's full service providers, emerging, developed markets, all regions represented. It's cable, it's twisted pair, it's fiber. There's no satellite or MVNOs in this group because they're not big enough. These are all US 10 billion a year in operating revenues and up. And between them, they control something like 75 to 80% of the legacy services market, the, the access to voice and data, mobile and fixed communications, uh, value-added services. So they've achieved 21.7% in adjacent market revenues, or to flip it around, the top four on the far right here, that's what we call the legacy communications market. It's almost still 80% of their total, and all of it across the group as an aggregate whole is in decline now. Minus 0.7% in 2017 and probably not going to see total growth again in the next several years. 
It's already on the way down. Mobile data included, emerging markets included, all the barred bands you want to throw at it, still going down. And margins under pressure, by the way. So they see that. That's what's driving them into the bottom components on this chart and over here on the left, the two big buckets, digital media services and IT services. That's where the big providers in the world have gotten their hands on growth money in these years, frankly through major acquisitions. Can you do that? Have you achieved this level of diversity? If you haven't, I'm here to tell you that especially in digital media services, that path is not available to you. There's not enough money, and there's nobody left. IT services, different story. We may have some way forward there. That's an area where you'd be offering all professional services, business support services, perhaps you've heard of those. There may be companies here at this convention that could help you offer those. I don't know. Take a look. Talk to some people. You may find that. It's a big part of success for the telecom providers. Brings its own challenges. And all of this together, I should quickly mention, these other um, categories include the wearables, the tablets, sale of those, uh, financial services, direct billing, uh, internet advertising, the sourcing of towers, all of that is in these other buckets, still relatively small, growing quickly. The adjacent revenues of these 31 providers grew at 5.4% in 2017. Oh, that's more like it. And that's only going to continue in future years as well. But there is a price to be paid for this. There's operational strain that comes from this diversity effort, and I don't think you're going to avoid it either. What we have here is the same group of 31 in a bubble chart, so the size of the bubble tells you their individual operating revenues, 2017. And on the horizontal axis, we show from low level of diversity to high, what proportion of your revenues were, did, were adjacent, how fast are those revenues growing. And then the vertical axis is some traditional measures of your operational health, the EBITDA margin, a little bit of your debt, OPEX to revenue ratio, uh, some of the revenue for employee uh, growth. That's from below average to above average. And there's your red line showing the average across this leading market group. And look at that. Look at that. In the upper right-hand corner, the one you want to be in, if you're in a Gartner quadrant of any kind, it's not a magic quadrant, but you see up there about 20, 21% of the total revenues of the group, above average diversity, above average operational health, and except for one of them, China Mobile, which is absolutely enormous, that's the big one up there, with that sole exception, the rest are all fairly small players. They're actually kind of unexciting. They have fixed plant, they're national incumbents in not very large nations. I think that could be encouraging news for you. First of all, there's no way you're ever going to be able to imitate China Mobile's path to success. You don't, you don't work in that kind of market, not at all. That's probably a good thing. But the other players in that, in that quadrant should be a sign of some uh, encouragement to you. By the same token, 42% of the total group revenues, bigger than any other quadrant, is down here in the lower right. That's what I call the transition zone. They've achieved the diversity, high diversity, but they're paying a heavy price. Their operational health is lower. Things like debt, EBITDA margin are lower than they are. They're looking for a northward move. So these are the challenges that we see facing even the largest providers in the world. One thing I'm here to assure you of is that you are not scaling your way out of this challenge. You will not achieve digital transformation by just getting bigger. I'm looking at you, Sprint and T-Mobile. I'm not saying it's a bad merger. There's plenty of good reasons. But the horizontal growth of those two companies is not going to solve this challenge, the asymmetrical competition challenge the internal organization challenge. Going into new ecosystems while being the weak brand partner, you have to have other answers for that. So, hopefully be able to tell you more in the afternoon session if you want to hear answers to questions like these. If you just want to know who's in the lower left-hand quadrant of this chart, <laughs> I can show you all that in the breakout session this afternoon. Today, remember, synergy, partnership, Organization, as you make a choice, but for whatever you do, make a choice. The diversified retail path, the smart utility path, but don't be sitting there 
like a deer in the headlights when this transformation challenge washes over you because the status quo is lethal. Mm -hmm.